Hi, I'm Monica. I'm a senior data analyst at ACAD Guild. If you've already watched videos on this channel, you've come across other statistical inferencing techniques. The technique that we are going to look at today, which is hypothesis testing, is one such inferencing technique where we draw general conclusions about a general population from a sample or a proportion of the population. What is hypothesis? A hypothesis is an uncertain proposed explanation for a phenomenon, an observation, or a scientific problem that can be tested further by further investigation. It is an examination of a proportion of the population. Hypothesis testing has wide-ranging applications. Some examples are a dentist wants to know whether the oral health of someone who brushes their teeth twice a day is better than that of those who brush their teeth only once a day. A manufacturer wants to know whether the products he's manufacturing are meeting certain pre-specified quality criteria. A researcher wants to know whether tweaking certain algorithm parameters is going to make his performance of algorithms better. In all these situations, hypothesis testing comes in handy. A hypothesis test evaluates two mutually exclusive statements about a population to determine which one of them is best supported by data that's drawn from a sample of the population. So the steps in hypothesis testing are as follows. State the null and alternative hypothesis. Decide on the significance level. Compute statistics on sample data. Calculate the p-value. And if the p-value is less than alpha, reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than or equal to alpha, do not reject the null hypothesis. Rejecting the null hypothesis suggests that the alternative hypothesis is true. So step one, state the null and alternative hypothesis. What is the null hypothesis? It is a statement of no effect. In effect, it states that there is nothing new that we can learn from the observations. It is denoted by H0. It is assumed to be true until evidence indicates otherwise. So the whole purpose of the hypothesis test is to find the strength of evidence against the null hypothesis. So in our example of a dentist who wants to find out if brushing the teeth twice a day improves oral health in children, the null hypothesis would be that the oral health of children who brush their teeth twice a day is the same as that of those who brush their teeth only once a day. So what is an alternative hypothesis? It is contrary to the null hypothesis. It is denoted by HA and it usually suggests that observations are the result of a real effect. In this example that we've been looking at of a dentist trying to find if brushing twice a day improves oral health in children, the alternative hypothesis would be that Indeed, there is an improvement in oral health if children brush their teeth twice a day rather than only once. So step two of hypothesis testing is to decide on a significance criterion. Significance criterion is denoted by the letter alpha. It is actually the likelihood of us rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. What is the null hypothesis? It is a statement of no effect. So in our example of a dentist trying to find if there is an improvement in oral health in those children who brush their teeth twice a day rather than only once, if we come to the conclusion that there is an improvement when actually there is no improvement, the likelihood of this occurring is denoted by alpha. The likelihood of us observing an effect when actually there is no effect is denoted by alpha. This alpha value needs to be set ahead of time for us to be ethical in carrying out this hypothesis test. Usually, these values are set to very low. As we can see, we want to make no error in coming to the conclusion about whether there is an effect in the population or not. Therefore, these values are set to values of 5% or less. So the next step, which is step 3 in the hypothesis testing process, is to calculate the sample statistic. We want to make inferences about a general population, but since we cannot go and make measurements individually for all members of a population, we make inferences from a sample of the population. And in order to make any conclusions about the population, we need to have some statistics. And we calculate them on the sample. In our example of the students or the children whose oral health we are trying to monitor, it would be, for example, calculating the oral health of 100 children by counting the number of healthy teeth they have. So if the number of healthy teeth each child had was an indication of how good the child's oral health was, and if we could calculate the mean of the oral health of 100 such children, then we would have calculated a sample statistic for this children population. Step four 
in the hypothesis testing process is to calculate the p-value. What is the p-value? The p-value is the probability of us observing an effect at least as extreme as the one that we have observed using the sample, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. It is a conditional probability of observing an effect as strong as what we observe in the samples if the null hypothesis is true. So in our example, assuming oral health of children is the effect that we are trying to monitor. If mu once denotes the mean oral health of children and mu twice represents the mean of oral health of children who brush twice, then the p-value to be calculated would be the probability of mu twice being greater than mu once given the null hypothesis is true. So step five of the hypothesis testing process is to reject or not to reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than or equal to alpha, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So what are the errors that we could run into when doing hypothesis testing? The errors in hypothesis testing are categorized as type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is the type of error that we make when we reject a null hypothesis that is actually true. That is, it is the error we make in drawing conclusions that there is an effect when there is in reality no effect to be observed. Type 2 is the error that we make when we fail to reject a null hypothesis that is false. That is, there is an effect in reality, but we do not conclude that there is an effect. We assume that there is no effect. That is a type 2 error. In our example, if there is truly no difference between brushing once and twice, but we conclude that there is enough evidence to suggest that there is a difference, then that would be a type 1 error. If there is a difference between brushing once and twice and we concluded that there is no evidence to suggest that, then that would be a type 2 error. We have to decide on the values of alpha and p-value in order to minimize either the type 1 or type 2 error depending on the specific problem we are looking at. Thank you for watching. For more videos, please subscribe to our channel. A cat killed. Average is dead.